Hey guys, welcome back. This is a continued video for Bambula P1S AMS system. As we mentioned on the P1S setup video, AMS system also has some common issues that you might want to know. We'll also go through a simple multicolor setup from Bambula Slicer on the second side of this video. With that being said, let's get started. As always, let's go over some checking list first. Checking list number one, filament compatibility. The AMS system will be able to print most of filament. However, it is not capable for any flexible filament like TPU and TPE. I actually managed to get TPU print through AMS system on the initial test video, but right after print was done, my TPU filament changed. I wasn't aware that you should not print TPU through an AMS system. I changed to another TPU filament, and this time, it changed right away after I insert filament. And I was not able to pull it back out. Up the quick search on the Google, and I found this one. So, if you are someone about to start playing with AMS, be aware of that. Now, bypass the AMS and manually inserting the TPU filament from the back of a printer is a way to get around it, but it's a pain. Luckily, you can download this model online and never need to mess up with the TPF YouTubing again. Checking list number two filament spool compatibility. Let's say most of you guys are saying as me that we don't want to spend $30 plus per kilogram premium for the Bamboo Lab filament, or you like the other vendor's filament more. By the time you are putting the filament in the AMS system, and you realize that it won't fit. The filament slots are quite narrow. It feels narrow, but it actually fits most of the filament. I have a test over 50 different filaments from the different brands. Most of them fit okay, but some just don't. Some are due to the width of a filament roll. Some are due to the too large diameter. Paper roll filament is another pain in the butt. Most of them works okay. Beside paper spool leaves a lot of debris over time. However, if your paper roll spool got beat up badly during the ship or it is out of a run, it will give you trouble. Sometimes may lead to a print fit. There is a filament roller guide that you can download and try to put on your paper rolls, but I would imagine it will be hard to find a correct diameter to fit different brands. Why there's no standardization things for filament spool? Checking list number three. Fail to put filament back. Okay, this might be the most common issue you are going to encounter with the AMS system. There are many possible root causes leading this issue, such as a wet filament snap within the system, TPU filament jamming, and poorly replicated gears. When you have this issue notified by the slicer or indicated by the red light here, don't try to force pulling the filament out. You might damage some of the gears within the system. Just carefully open the device and pull the filament out. There is a step-by-step -step tutorial video pops up above if you'd like to check it out. I just want to give you some heads up information here. Try to avoid using TPU on the AMS system. If you have a wet filament, or not sure if it's wet, just bend the filament like this. If it breaks easily, dry the filament before you use it, or just trying to avoid putting in the system. Also, the sharp angle bend above the extruder might sometimes cause a filament clogging issue. A simple upgrade like this one will fix the problem. Checking list number four, feeding tunnel wear. You might be surprised to see this one, but it actually will happen over time. When the filament is rubbing against it with a sharp angle, check this one out from under three. Filament will tear metal apart. Quite surprised, right? I can't tell you how much it is possible to happen on yours, or how much filament it will take to wear like this. It is really depends on how often you are running it and what filament you are printing. But adding a simple upgrade on top of this device to prevent this happening might be the best call. Some people might prefer an extra amount of strain relief one like this. Chicken list number five. Upgrade. We have already mentioned on many upgrades to fix some of the issues for the AMS system. Now, let's talk about some upgrades that make this system even better. The filament dryer system might be the first one in my opinion, so that you are able to add more dryer in a box to keep your filament dry. At the same time, you can have a little hydrometer to display the humidity level within the box. A printer top razor will be maximized and utilize your space. There are many styles available you can find out online. I am also working on one that will help store some of your box over here. There are also some dedicated models like this to increase the maximum filament width that we talk about on the chicken list above. Chicken list number six, maintenance. Yes, AM assistant also require maintenance. You probably won't need to rubricate gears and do all the maintenance things when it's new, 
But over time, some regular maintenance will increase your AMS system lifespan and make it happier. First, if you are printing with a paper roll of a filament, you might want to use a vacuum cleaner to clean out some of the dust and debris inside the box. Use some alcohol to wipe the roller. Prevent the debris buildup cause slip. TPFE tubes are also tear and wear parts. The inside diameter tend to wear out. That's why they have provided some spare tubes for you. Some people might consider upgrade to Capcom TPFE tubes, but pay attention that the inside diameter of the original one is a different from Capcom one. Their smaller diameter means more friction and drags when you fill them passing through it. I probably just want to stick with the original one. All right. There is enough information for you to just digest there. Let's quickly go through the slicer setting for the multicolor print. I don't want to bore you with the 800 hours long video, fully packed with jargons and turns. So let's make it simple. All we need to do is add more filament first. Click on this plus sign. You will see there is a one more filament option appears here. You could also remove one by clicking the minus sign. Notice there is a color in front of every filament here. The color has nothing to do with your actual printing. It will just color code it, so it will be easier for you to modify later and identify which one filament is. You could change it by clicking over here. I like to change the color match the actual color that I'm going to print. It will help me select the filament slot later. By clicking the filament name, you can select different filament options. Generally, you would like to print the same type of filament. What I mean by same type of filament is that PLA goes with a PLA, PETG goes with a PETG, and ABS pair with ABS. You could somehow mix match PLA with a PETG if a nozzle temperature setting is close to each other. But I have not tested before, so I can't tell you if it's gonna work or not. But if you are trying to mix match with the PLA with ABS with big difference in nozzle temperature, the slicer actually won't let you do it. Also, the higher nozzle temperature during a filament swap might clog the nozzle, so don't try it. You could also change the filament setting over here. You can change the nozzle temp, bed temp, starting g-code and other stuff. Let's add a model and see how can we modify the color. Let's begin with a simple one. Select the model from the review window first. You'll see these two options appear here. Color painting and a symbol review. You can add color from both these options, but I normally go for color painting. Select color painting. A new window appears. You can see there are four different colors that we have previously pre-selected. You can pick any of them and go down to two types option. Here's a place you can choose how you're gonna paint different colors. First one, circle. It paints only on top of the visible layer, so it does not go down to any second or third layers. You can select pen size to increase or decrease the brush size. Second one, sphere. It's very much similar to the circle, but I think it will be penetration down the second and third layer. Third one, triangle. It will try to find a triangle mesh over the surface. If you don't know what's a mesh, just it's just how the computer calculates the model with a different triangle. Fourth, height range. It is most commonly used one. When you select it, it will pick the entire surface with the same height to the color that you select, but it is only appears on the surface layer. Fifth, fill and get fill. Fill works very much similar logic with the height range. It will be filling it will be filling the entire surface within a range for whatever you selected. And lastly, get fill. It's just used to filling us uh, small gaps. You could always remove everything by clicking on this one. Okay, toward to the end. Always remember that when you are using a multicolor, there will be a prime tower over this area. You can see it is interface with my part. We can either move the part away or move the prime tower away. Now we have to send the print to the printer. Always confirm that the slot number matches the color that you want. That should be it guys. If you have any questions, leave it on the comment section below. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Make more people see this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon.